Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and today I do have a fountain pen that I want to share with you. This is the Jinhao 100. This is actually a 2020 pen. It celebrated their 100th year as a pen maker, and it is in the Parker Duofold style. It, there are some differences, definitely, but it's in the Parker Duofold style, which there's that going on. We won't get into all of that today. I want to look at this pen for the way it is. And one of the things I like about this one is this cool orange uh, citrus-like resin. I just thought that was really, really cool. Every now and then I get on a little bit of an orange kick and I've kind of done that recently with a couple of pens that I had to share with you, this being one of them. But here's the thing. I'm just going to tell you this ahead of time. This pen has been really good. I like this pen, but let's flip the camera and let me tell you why. Okay, let's look at the Jinhao 100, and I love this orange resin, as I just said. Uh, just really, really cool. And I think a, a step up from that normal orange uh, color that you're used to seeing in the Jinhao 100. And let me just apologize because maybe uh, my kids would, would have me do it. I just cleaned the fireplace just before I made this video, and so I, I couldn't get it all off. You know, well, it's okay. This is not a fashion thing. This is a pen thing, right? Okay, so let's look at this. The cap, as you can see, has this really nice gold band and uh, gold tone steel clip, which has uh, good stiffness. And I like when they have this round ball on there because it just is really easy to put in and out of a pocket or a, a little uh, pen uh, loop and things like that on my calendar. And so I, I like that shape, very functionally efficient, and it just it just works. As I said, it has that nice band with Jin Hao on it and nothing else. Then you get up to the finial, and it's uh, different from a lot of other Jin Hao's in that it has the logo on top of that finial that looks, I think, Really cool, and the gold is a nice contrast to the black, and just a, a really nice look. Of course, you can see inside all that's going on there. You don't need an LED to do that with this one. Plenty of light comes through that orange and just makes that easy to see. Okay, you got all you need the information out of that you need? Okay, you see that? You see that? Uh -huh. Okay, now you get to the nib, and this is a great nib as you're seeing in the writing test, but it's a nice two-toned fine nib is the one that I have. You can see that with its plastic feet. It is a number six, which uh, I'm very happy with this nib, but it does give you options if you are a nib swapper. So there is that. This nice uh, gold tone band here and here. The threads are done nicely and uh, no sharpness or irritation there at all. I find this to be a very comfortable se uh, section. You know, it has that uh, bell shape at the end, which is true to most of these duofold style pins, and just a good, comfortable rider. Well balanced. Um, it does post and post securely, and even though this is a large pin, it actually is not like way out of balance there at all. Very comfortable to write posted or not. I just like that all the way around. The feel of this pen is excellent, uh, at least for me. I mean, that's that's always one of those your mileage may vary things. Uh, everybody has their different, they want them larger, smaller, thinner, uh, larger diameter and everything else. But for me, this is a really comfortable pen to write with. Now we see that it does have, as always, the included converter, as always with Jin Hao. Not enough companies do that, but Jin Hao is great about this. So it does have the included international standard converter and takes international standard cartridges. So you have a lot of ink options with this pen. And then it has a pretty long, uh, I just lost my vocabulary, but you see that? It's long. <laughs> <laughs> the, the feed and everything, uh, the feed section going into the grip section is uh, metal and nicely done in that gold tone, and it's and it's long. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. Major brain fart there. Sorry about that. Okay, 
So that goes on. I, you know, I haven't counted turns in a video, I don't think, in a while. So let's let's just count turns. Some people really like to know that sort of thing. Some of you are going to be irritated. Every now and then somebody says, what are you counting those turns for? I don't know. People like it. Uh, that's okay. So there you go. One and two and three and you're off. So not bad at all. And of course, one, two, three, and you're back on. It's amazing how the math works the same both ways, right? Now let's look at this pen from a writing point of view, because I don't know about you, but I know that for me, it can look this good, but if it writes horribly, I really don't care for the pen. Is that gonna be the case? Probably not, since I already told you that I like the pen, and I wouldn't have told you that if it didn't write well. But let's flip the camera and look anyway at how it actually writes. Okay, so let's take a look at the Jinhao 100. As I said, this pen really has a nice feel. The quality is there. Uh, for the price, I think you're getting a really good quality resin and build and just a great looking pen. I will tell you this, on the nib, which I didn't show you earlier, the nib with its two-tone, you will not mistake what size nib you have. That fine there is very, very clear, right? But it writes really nicely, and I think it's it's finer than most other Jinhao Fine Number no. Six nibs that I have. This is not a gusher; some of theirs can be a little bit uh, wet, but this one is really not bad at all. This ink is a Waterman Serenity Blue. There was a great sale on this ink, and I picked up a few bottles of it for like five bucks a piece was great. Really nice everyday ink and I really like it. It suits this pen, I think, quite well. I'm going to be quiet and let you hear. As you can see, that is a really nice, quiet writer. Uh, if you're newer to fountain pens, you may think, well, why does that sound matter? Well, uh, some, some nibs just make different noises, and some people like really as quiet as possible a nib. Others kind of like that pencil-y feedback uh, that you can hear. And that's just a matter of preference and taste in most cases. There are some pens that really, they kind of sing as they go across the paper and people like that. Um, and then there are some that are, uh, like you're going to bother the person sitting next to you kind of loud and, and probably people don't like that. Let's talk about some pros and some cons just real quickly. Pros for me on this pen are both the style, which is familiar, didn't originate with Jin Hao, and the build. Both of those things on this pen are excellent, especially for the price that you're going to pay. I think it is a great value. It's a very comfortable writer. Easy pen to write with all day long. Does come with a converter. That's a small thing, but I'm still putting it because there are so many pens that still do not. Those are just a few things. I think the nib is really nice. It looks really good. It writes really well. Uh, maybe of all the Jin Hao's I have right now, my favorite fine nib. It's, it's that good, both in appearance and in function. So at least on my copy of this pen, Excellent. Cons. Let's see here. Are there any? Um, some are going to say that for a Jin Hao, it is a higher price. I don't think that the price is really bad. I'm just going to say price uh, higher than average for, for Jin Hao. I'm going to put that caveat because it's, it's not high okay, for fountain pens in general. But for a Jin Hao, 
it's going to be a little bit more. Um, are there any others? Uh, you know, let's let's put this down. For an anniversary pen, I am going to put as a con its lack of originality. I feel like that Jin Hao has the chops that they could have done something original uh, as a Jin Hao 100 anniversary pen, and they didn't do that. Uh, I, I get probably why they decide to go with a classic design to say, hey, we've been making these, and I understand, you know, the connections to, to Parker and everything else for the ja uh, excuse me, Chinese pen makers, but I just think it would have been cool if they'd done something, really knocked it out of the park original. Uh, would have been pretty neat for them. But is it, does it represent them well for, as a pen maker uh, and their anniversary? Uh, it does, because let me tell you, of all my gin house, and I have a bunch, and I have some that are really my favorites. For example, and let's just do a little size thing right quick while I'm telling you about this. Uh, the Parker 51, regular viewers of this channel know, really a, a great bargain pen from Jin Hao, and I really like it. This is the wood version of that pen. That gives you a good idea of size. So it's a sizable pen, because this is a longer pen, even though it's not a big pen. Uh, lengthwise, they're about the same. This, of course, bigger in diameter. Um, but this pen is awesome, and I love it, and it has that great number five steel nib. I uh, wrote with that just earlier today doing some work, and I always like that. Speaking of classic looking pens not made by their original makers. This is the Pen BBS 480, another wonderful pen. Um, let's see, something to contrast the size so that you kind of get scale. Here is a Pelican 200. There you go. And that gives you a smaller pen to compare it to as well. But really, a nice looking pen. Look how well that holds up next to these other two pens that I would, cer certainly the Pelican I would put way above it uh, in terms of materials and everything like that. Uh, pen, BS, B pen BBS as well uh, sits high in my regard, but that Jin Hao really is a great looking pen next to those two. And it, no, it's not a Pelican and it's not, you know, competition to them. But let me say, for uh, the money, it is a great pen good looking comfortable well writing you know just a you know it's not original you, you got to be aware of that uh, but if if you uh, are somebody that thinks you know a Parker dual fold at hundreds of dollars is just either out of your range or simply not something you're interested in uh, but this you would be then I'm gonna tell you I, this pen I would recommend it's it's a really good writer well balanced in the hand uh, I like this orange resin. I'm sure some of the others, which I've seen online but not in person, are also quite good. And so, uh, yeah, I give that one definitely the stamp of approval. It has really been an enjoyable pen to write with. Not just a good pen, an enjoyable pen to write with. So, God bless you all. Stay safe. Have a wonderful week. And thank you for watching. And share this with somebody you think might be interested in a big, bright orange pen.